teach you how to make. And uh, along with comedian Rich Carucci, hopefully we are welcoming in now the Rev himself, Reverend Horney. There he is. Hey. Good to see you again, Jim. Hey, good to see you too, Don. Yeah, we uh, we had a lot of fun this summer. Yeah, that was fun, hooking up with uh, Zach Sabbath. Yeah, man. It was, uh, I'll tell you, one of, and, and you know, because we talked about it for years, but one of the... The things I've always I've wanted to do for a long time is team up on a show with your band, and we finally made it happen this past summer. I was out with uh, Zach Wild and his band Zach Sabbath, and the Rev was out with his band and the uh, the Delta Bombers, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. and, and we ran into each other at Sturgis at the bike rally at the Buffalo Chip. And yep. I said, uh, where, are you, where are you guys heading after the show tonight? And he's like, uh, oh, we're going to Fargo. I'm like, well, we're going to Fargo, too. Both had the day off the next day, and we were both playing in Fargo on a Monday. And the Brain Trust that uh, is both uh, tour managers, I guess, got together and combined our shows. And what a night, man. Yeah, yeah, that was a, that was a cool deal. I'm glad they did that. It was great because, um, you know, your fans came and they embraced me and, and what, you know, Zach was doing, playing all the Black Sabbath songs. And then his yeah. crowd embraced, you know, the, the rockabilly side of things with you guys and the Delta Bombers. And, and Monday night, about 800 people in a renovated church. Man, a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah, that was awesome. And you were really funny. It was great to get to see your act and uh, and hang out. And oh, yeah, I was. Uh, yeah, you know, Zach asked us asked us to do uh, some more shows uh, coming up here in the spring, but we're we're booked so far in advance. There was no way we could do it, and I'm kicking myself. Uh, but you know, sometimes you can't be in two places at once. I guess. Yeah, I saw you. I saw some 20, 20 dates were announced, uh, mostly West Coast dates here in the States, but then also you got the UK coming up, and uh, you don't do the UK a lot, do you? No, we don't do Europe as, that much anymore. We used to do it a lot, but uh, yeah, I don't, I'm not sure exactly why, but uh, yeah, it just kind of is what it is, you know. <laughs> I saw, too, you're doing um, Hellfest in France. Have you done that before? No, no, we're looking forward to that one. Yeah, I, I've I've done I've been there twice, and Hellfest is quite an experience, man. You, you you're really gonna dig oh, okay. it. The, the people there they they embrace every kind of style of of rock music. Um, the guy who owns that property, he he well, I should say he owns the property. So as opposed to most festivals, he doesn't have to tear everything down once the weekend's over. So literally there's there's a giant roller coaster and the backstage area looks like you know like a scene out of Mad Max like post apocalyptic you know like helicopters in the trees and uh, it's really outrageous giant trees out in the festival grounds that spell out Hellfest in the branches so um it it's 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 really a sight to see man you're going you're really going to enjoy it okay all right and cool. and depending on what day you play, um, because most of, it's a hundred thousand people, most of them camp out. So by the third day, it's just a hundred thousand dirt people, wow. just people covered in mud because they haven't showered all weekend. <laughs> so, so it's a good time, and don't forget to get a picture by the Lemmy stat. The, they have a hundred foot tall oh, Lemmy yes. statue, <laughs> which is uh, really really cool. And I I know you toured. Uh, with uh with motorhead and, and lemmy you got any uh any stories from uh touring with those guys um well one funny thing is uh is uh the the guitar player gosh i'm losing my memory what's the guitar players uh, 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 phil uh, phil phil that's right phil i yeah he uh uh jimbo every night at the end of the night jimbo has he plays upright bass and he has this big case and uh, at the end of the night, he takes his bass and he opens up the case and puts his big bass in there. And one night, every, a lot of everybody was all standing around while he was about to put his case back, uh, his bass back into the case. And he unzipped it and opens it up. And out pops Phil with a drink and a cigarette. <laughs> it was it was crazy. It was pretty cool. But uh, yeah, no, those, those those guys are a lot of fun to hang around with. And yeah. I want. I, I just want to know how long he was in there with the cigarette lid and the lid closed. <laughs> I, know. I know. I know. That's when he had a drink too. That's, yeah. 
Yeah, well, that's yeah. mandatory. But that's, you know, that's what's amazing about your band, you know, and, and I've always said this. You, you, you guys are, you know, you can characterize your music however you want. You could call it psychabilly, you could call it rockabilly, you could call it rock and roll. But you guys have always had the ability to be on lots of different bills. You've toured with Motorhead, you've toured with Nashville Pussy, you've toured with country bands. Um, do you, I guess, you know, do you feel like that's one of the keys to the longevity of the band? Because you're going on about 30 years now, huh? Well, yeah, I mean, you know, we were so desperate, Don, that we would we would do anything, you know. But what was kind of cool is that we would just adjust our set list of our own songs that were our original music. So, <clears throat> excuse me, we could we could play a country western, open up for you know uh, Johnny Paycheck one night, and then off playing the heavy metal room the next night, and we would just kind of adjust our set list and. Uh, you know, and but you know, we we kind of had to bounce around in the early days from different types of venues. But we found out pretty quick that the alternative, full on rock and roll shows were way more fun than the you know a polite a polite applause at the jazz club. You know, so <laughs> yeah. you know it, it's it's all gratifying. But you know, I mean, you know this the whole thing with people you know going crazy and and really into the band uh, that 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 really kind of helped make us, you know, so that crowd, you know, so. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I mean, it's, it's just crazy. The crossover appeal. And like you said, you know, you just adjust a couple of songs here or there and you could play for a totally different audience. And, you know, Richie and I were talking about, you know, just some of the, the craziest gigs that we've done, you know, we've played in people's living rooms, we've done children's <laughs> parties and stuff. Is there any, any gigs that stick out in your mind as, as one of the strangest? Well, one time we played in Russia. It was a, a long time ago, and it w wasn't really that long after they had, uh, you know, the, the Berlin Wall had come down. They were trying to get rid of uh, old Soviet communism, but it was still basically in place. But uh, they put us up in the insane asylum. They didn't have a <laughs> hotel, so we were we were guests at this insane insane asylum. And I think they probably thought that we were even crazier than the people that were in there. But, uh. but uh, <laughs> Richie, have but, you ever uh, played an insane asylum? Yeah, you have. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> yeah. So that, that could. That, hey, they, we might they need find an agent too. who books that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you never know. So, so yeah, the Rev played an insane asylum. That's crazy. Mm -hmm. um, you have a relatively new member of the band. Um, w quickly become one of my favorites of yours, uh, your drummer, RJ. What's, uh, oh, cool. what's the special sauce that uh, RJ brings to the band? I have my own ideas, but I'd like to hear it from you. <laughs> well, you know, for one thing, he's a super great guy and I love hanging around with him. He's my buddy and he's, he's just a lot of fun and a very affable person. And, uh, but beyond all that, you know, he's got training, you know, he's got, he's a jazz jazz. He's got a degree in jazz drumming, but you know, he can play all sorts of different kinds of music, but he's so quick. His tempo is so good and he's so tasteful. And, you know, but he's quick. He can chart out any song we want to do right there. And, man, he's in the pocket. So he's just an amazing musician, you know. It's just, it's just, it's really cool to have. Because, I, you know, I've, I've kind of taught myself some stuff about music, music theory and stuff like that. But, you know, him having a full-on degree in music, it really helps us kind of hold things together when we have to back up people. And, uh, but, no, he's an awesome guy. <laughs> oh yeah, I can I can attest that he, he's a lot of fun. And uh, didn't now didn't he? Because um, I think you talked about it in your stage rap. He did he play with uh, Donna Summer? Was that right? Yeah, he played with Donna Summer. <laughs> yeah, and the, so so what I do is I tell the I tell the crowd, hey, wait a minute, you know what my motto in high school was? Disco sucks. <laughs> <laughs> you know? But yeah, so. and now you have Donna Summer's drummer in your band. Now we have Donna Summer's drummer. So we but get, actually it, now now I kind of like disco or that old disco <laughs> is kind of nostalgic now. But man, when I was in, I hated it. Man, I wanted rock and roll. I wanted rock. You know, I didn't want that 
all that sh- I will survive crap, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I know. We were, we were, you know, people were very, especially back then, we were very protective of our music. And now you look, sort of look back because you, you hear the direct that's out there now and you sort of go, oh man, you know, those old R&B bands from the 70s and even the disco. I mean, I, I could sit and listen to the, the Saturday Night Fever soundtrack any day of the week, man. The Bee Gees, they, they ruled, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was, yeah, some of it's better than others, but. But yeah, some of that, some some of the stuff had really great musicianship, and uh, well, a lot of it did. You know, now all that kind of stuff is all computer generated. But yeah. you could kind of tell even back then, a lot of it was computer generated. You know, a lot of the beats they were getting were just basically samples. And but you know, it is what it is. You know, I you know, gosh, I far be it for me to complain about it. <laughs> all right. Well, there's well, there's no no sampling during a Reverend Horton Heat show. No, we don't do that. No we tracks don't do that playing on our recordings or on our <laughs> yeah, no tracks. No. Yeah, you live and die by the sword. Uh huh. That's y- right. Yeah, and I'm I, and I'm probably at in because I'll see you um, for people on the East Coast here uh, this Saturday. You'll be at uh, Asbury Lanes in Asbury Park, oh, New Jersey. Yeah. Which is uh-huh. back, and that, that's one of the places I've I've seen you play before, and that went away. It's literally a bowling alley, and they yeah, put the is. stage right in the middle. There's the uh, the tour posters. This is Horton's Holiday Hayride. Talk about what's what's the concept of the show for um, the, the 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 show you're on the road with right now. Well, um, we play we play our own version of Christmas songs, uh, in, in between our, our biggest songs mainly. And then, and then, you know, a couple of the new, we have a, an album that's, that's, it's about a, it's been out about a year, but to us, it's still a new album, but, uh, yeah, All new we, play life. These, we play Christmas songs and then we play <laughs> stuff, but it's, it's fun. We have, we have some kind of goofy, uh, we have kind of a goofy stage design with our, you know, Christmas stuff. And, uh, but then we're up, we have our guest on this tour is Dave Alvin. We stop in wow. the middle of our set, Dave Alvin from the blasters and, uh, we'll stop and, uh, and, uh, bring out his his stuff and he plays about five or six songs with us and uh but we got some other killer bands the voodoo glow glow skulls um the five six seven eight's a great japanese girl surf band from they were in the movie kill bill and uh they're out with us now and so uh uh, new bomb turks we've got some we got a really strong lineup with this thing but uh yeah, christmas songs every this this is the third year we've had to do it and you know it's kind of like Oh, Christmas songs, you know, I mean, it's fun and it's, but they're a lot, they're kind of harder than you would think, you know, you think, mm-hmm. oh, just Frosty the Snowman. Well, Frosty the Snowman has three pages of lyrics. So oh, no. <laughs> that, I've killed too many brain cells for that. Crap. <laughs> I, 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 we don't do Frosty, man. I can't handle that. Yeah. Frosty's got too many stanzas in it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, but and I'm sucks. sure that and I'm sure you sucks. I'm sure you 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 rev uh, do your own versions of the songs as well. So then you got to remember the arrangements and and all that stuff. So yeah, yeah, but it's it's kind of fun, you know, because a lot of those things that you know our our arrangements have kind of cool key changes and stuff that maybe not our, our own music doesn't have. So it's kind of it's fun for us and uh, something different, you know, and. Uh, so you know, <laughs> yeah, I know, I've seen the holiday show before. It is a great time. And the other thing I, I love, and you probably don't do it this time around because you're mixing in the Christmas songs. But for a couple tours there, I love that. Uh, and again, I'm I'm probably at stalker status at this point. I've seen the Rev so many times. <laughs> I've already bullied my way onto a show with him. So uh, I've been down pretty much every road with you guys. But I, I really loved when you. Um, you let the audience yell out requests. You did that for a little while. You ever plan on doing that again? Um, well, no, that's a good shtick. We'll bring that back. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, it was, it was funny because I was in a band a long time ago that, um, the, the, the guy, there was the, the set list of this guy. It was like 150 songs that you had to be ready to play. Wow. And, uh, and so this guy would say, okay, anybody, any request, any request. And it was, and no matter, and people would all start yelling and he would just play whatever. <laughs> yeah. Well, that that's the trick, right? <laughs> yeah. That's, that's the shtick. Yeah. You, you, you pretend you're taking, but no, we actually do. We, tr- we do the best we can on those types of circumstances, but, uh, 
Yeah, I'll bring that back. Thanks. Hey, I'm always looking for new stick. Well, yeah, but that's what you like. I always like. I'll say to a crowd, I'll say, uh, "What's your, you know, hey, you know, I'll pick out some of the crowd. I'll go, what's your favorite band? I got a joke about anybody that you like, and they'll, you know, they'll kiss, and I'll go. I'm glad you mentioned the Scorpions. <laughs> you see the Scorpions. <laughs> So you, it, it's just whatever you pretend to hear, then you can, you know, you can play it. If someone yells out, you know, uh, play Psychobilly Freakout, and you go, Martini time, got it, okay, let's play. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, so you, you know, can control I, I, it. I, I think for for some of us old rocker guys, we're kind of learning that uh, losing your hearing, it's kind of awesome. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. So Selective you know, my, hearing. My, Right, right. I come. I get. I get great ideas because people will say something, and my mind thinks they said something completely different. It's awesome. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's it's you know it's interesting with your band, Jim, because you know you're 30 years now with the set. You you go from a, a Dallas sound man to this band that you've had for 30 years. You've had the partnership with Jimbo playing the bass, and you know had a couple of different drummers over the year, but essentially, it's been the same band. Um, but there hasn't been any number one singles or anything like that. And I always wonder with bands, because the ones that have sort of are considered one hit wonders, it's kind of a curse and a blessing to have a hit song. But I don't know. Do you feel like maybe in a way, just be, just the fact that you've been consistent over the years and continue to touring, if that also contributes to the longevity of what you've been doing? Well, you really hit the nail on the head because, yeah, we never had the big hit that, that vaulted us to superstardom. But, uh, you know, we, 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 we did get commercial airplay on uh, a lot of different stuff that we've done, but, you know, never the big hit. And, you know, frankly, it's been a blessing because it's a long fall. I mean, it's yeah. a long and hard fall to go from platinum selling album to 50 people in Dubuque. You know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I don't want to diss on Dubuque or anything, but uh, but yeah, no. And uh, we've actually, without naming names, we've had some platinum sell selling bands who now come out and open up for us. And so yeah. you know, we so and, and you know, my art form is playing music, which means I have to get out there and play live and travel and go do it, as opposed to just the technology of record sales, you know. And so. Uh, and it's coming back to that now. You know, a lot of these bands that, that you and I, uh, rock bands that you and I loved back in the day that were huge, mm -hmm. you know, they're coming, they're having to, the record sales fell off because of the internet. They're having to come out and compete against us. And, you know, these venues like House of Blues and the theaters across uh, America and stuff like that. And so, uh, you know, so it's all, it all eventually comes back to live music is the art form. Yeah, and um, by the way, Dubuque just called. Uh, they've canceled your 2020 <laughs> dates and beyond. Oh, no. Oh, no, I can't go to Dubuque now. <laughs> the good thing is Sheboygan called, and they're going to fill the date for you. <laughs> just try not to make oh, fun Sheboygan. of Sheboygan. <laughs> Sheboygan. You got you to gotta get that, that New York Sheboygan. Sheboygan. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'll, I'll practice that later. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, and, and you mentioned uh, your newest album, which is called Whole New Life, um, that people People should definitely check out. I have my Hold New Life Pomade. That's oh, yeah. signed uh -huh. by the Rev right there. In case I ever yeah, want to go with the clever. Pompadour, yeah. There you go. That, yeah, uh, that's clever. Yeah. yeah. I maybe I'll maybe I'll Pompadour up for um, the show this weekend at uh, Asbury Lane Saturday night. Um, yeah, your girlfriend will really appreciate the grease on the pillow. I, I guarantee you. <laughs> well, they're, they're, there's a lot of places we can go with uh, my girlfriend and the word grease, but uh, <laughs> we'll leave that for another time. That, and that, that's also the other thing about about your band, man. Is you know the, the musicianship is is just next level, um, and obviously you also put a lot of work into your lyrics, but. In all these years, you've never lost your sense of humor uh, with the lyrics. Like we were just watching the part of the video for "Let Me Teach You How to Eat." H how do you how do you keep that sense of humor in in this godforsaken business of music? Well, you know, I uh, I I just think if I think it's funny, I just I just do it, you know. And uh, I I I have had a couple of run-ins with our record labels about. <laughs> <laughs> about my sense of humor, yeah. but uh, 
but uh, uh, yeah, it's I. You know, I the beautiful thing about what I do is, and I heard you guys talking about how hard it is for you know, like people getting on you about saying something that's politically incorrect. Yeah. You know, I remember, I remember a time when everything was politically incorrect. That was Richard Pryor's <laughs> whole gig. You know, I yeah. mean, <laughs> and so now it's a hard, it's harder for for a lot of people, but for us, I really think it's not. I think that. You know, I'm in a I'm in a situation where I could pretty much do whatever I want to do as as you know, I, you know, but I you know, I I somewhat know the boundaries, but you know, I'm a good person. I'm not going to come out and do a bunch of <laughs> you know, mean and hateful lyrics, you know. So yeah. You know, it's going to be funny. It might make fun of people. It might hurt some people's feelings, but I don't know. Gosh, I hate, I hate, I hate that we even have to think about this. I know you've already alienated Dubuque, so you might as well go for it now. Uh, you'll, you, no more, no more Reverend Horton Heaton Dubuque. But uh, they are, uh, they are often on the road, and uh, you would be very remiss to not catch one of their shows. Hey, man, thank you so much, man. I know you're up in Canada. You guys are on the road. I'll see you this weekend, and thanks for a couple of minutes, Rev. Hey, thank you, Don. Take care. Looking forward to seeing you. See you this weekend, bro. Okay, man. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.